folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about self-filming in a saddle. But first, don't forget to enter our giveaway. At 500 subscribers, we're giving away a Yeti Hopper. You could be that guy. Stay tuned, follow us along. All right, folks, so here we are atop the tethered, uh, the tethered platform. And we're set up in the tree. This is basically kind of how I run my self-filming setup. When I got started, um, I, like probably a lot of you that are watching this video, searched all over YouTube. Um, Google, everywhere you could find, trying to find how to um, sell film hunts. Um, the first thing I'll point out here is my camera arm base. Okay, my muddy camera arm base. This is probably as simple as you can get. Um, there's obviously other, other brands that you can buy. Um, money's gonna differ depending on who you go with, but this one was your most generic. Um, it's gonna hold a decent sized camera which was what I was looking for, something that was gonna hold a little bit of weight um, and wasn't terribly heavy to tote around. It's, I mean, you can see my bag's a little bigger, so I have to carry a bigger bag to fit it all in there. Um, but this camera base is a big, big key. You gotta have a good camera base if you wanna run a, a good, decent camera, because your base has to be able to hold the weight that you're trying to support. Um, same with the camera arm here. It's a little bit longer. Some that you may have seen are probably shorter, some maybe bigger than this, but this is, um, uh, I believe it was M uh, Muddy's Outfitter Pro was what it was called. And we'll put all these links in the description where you can find these, the base and the, the camera arm. But this gives you a lot of mobility, can swing you out fairly wide. If you need to get around limbs or whatever the case may be, um, you have the mobility to do that, the freedom to do that. It also lets me swing it in here, um, depending on where I need to go. I don't have to always go so far to my shooting side, mainly because I can get it from this side. Um, I try to keep my camera on my non-shooting side as much as possible. Um, so I kind of may give up a little bit of a room on this side, but most of what I need to get, I can get from my stationary position right here, just from moving the camera around, or I can swing it to this side of the tree and get everything from just about the front of the tree all the way behind me. So that's kind of your generic camera setup. Um, again, you can go with fourth arrow, you can go with um, some other brands and things like that. You're going to get what you pay for. Um, fourth arrow, in my opinion, is probably the better one. We're getting ready to switch that direction just to kind of shrink down the bulkiness of what we're toting around. Um, but nevertheless, if you're looking to get into cell filming, this is a great setup to do it with. You're probably going to spend anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks on this and the camera arm. So pretty good buy, pretty good steal and um, it's exactly what you need if you want to get started self-filming. So you go back to the early days of Hunt More Official, you see that most of the hunting we did, we did out of lock-on stands, fixed position stands. Um, everything was filmed kind of off of our right side, coming around in front of us. We like that setup, we still use that setup now, but we've kind of gotten to a lot more um, mobile hunting. We kind of bounce around a lot more than we used to. We're here some days, we're here um, maybe a little bit longer but we wanted more mobility to be able to um, kind of go and hunt on, on a whim. And so we went to the tethered saddle. I really love the saddle uh, with the self-filming setup because it allows you to, I mean, swing around the tree, especially I don't have my, my knee pad on the tree right now, but when my knee pad's here, I can swing all the way to this side if I needed to and bring that camera with me, come back to the other side and use the tree to hide behind. A lot of times you're moving that camera, you're sitting on the front side of the tree, you're trying to be still, you're trying not to get caught by deer. And in my case, more times than not, I got caught. Um, could be the tree, could be the fact that they just see you moving a lot. So we've really liked backing up and going on the back side of the tree, using the self film setup, keeping everything on our non-shooting side um, because it just allows us a little more mobility and to me a little more concealment uh, when you're trying to film and hunt. Everybody's I mean, favorite question is how am I gonna shoot? Um, you watch this hunt right here going back to last year, um, January, a buck that I killed. You see, I mean, I'm in my saddle, camera's off to my non-shooting side. Everything was kind of planned to be shooting over here on my left-hand side, my, my bow side, but it allowed me the, the room with the saddle to get that camera right in here behind my hip and still have the freedom to get drawn back, get on the deer, stop him, make sure everything was where it needed to be and get the shot off. Um, I also ha I had to shoot a coyote earlier in, that, uh, earlier in that hunt, and it was the same kind of thing. Swung around to the front side um, with the camera, and once I got on the coyote, 
got ready to stop him, everything was in position. The coyote shoots off, he skirts up the hill. But if, I mean, that's a big testament to the saddle. If you're not in a saddle there, you can't really get in position to shoot it. The saddle really helps not only with flexibility, flexibility, but to me it really helps with making sure that you feel secure when you're getting ready to shoot. Um, in a lock-on, yeah, you're hooked up with a harness, you're connected to the tree, but there's a lot of play in that harness, front to back, side to side. You really gotta rely on your core and your body and yourself to make sure you remain stable. In these saddles, you can kind of put, the, put your trust in them. I love Tethered. Um, they've been great for us. They're solid, they're built well, and they really do hold up good. I mean, they make sure that you feel tight, connected to this tree all the time, no matter climbing up, climbing down, or uh, sitting in the, in the saddle hunting. So if you're interested in getting into self-filming, think about saddle hunting. Um, it's not as hard as it seems. Um, and take into consideration kind of the stuff that we showed you, the camera arm base, the camera arm itself. Um, if you look here at our camera, we didn't talk much about it, but your camera really is up to you. You can spend as much money as you want to spend. We have a cheaper one, we have a more expensive one, but don't get lost in the camera. Get to filming, buy you something. I'm more, I'm more worried about you buying the utensils you need to film in the tree. Camera is what it is. A lot of this stuff you can just about do with your phone. You just gotta make sure you're set up in the tree correctly. So we hope this video helps you out. Stay tuned to our channel for more videos and we'll see you next time right here on Hunt More Official.